So we are here in Module 4 of the Online Course Design Academy. Again, our second live online session, also our last online session of the Academy. Um, I have an informal agenda for this afternoon. I do want to have time for a lot of question and answer and um, demoing, perhaps, and um, interaction amongst ourselves. Um, but in case anybody is not familiar with who I am already, my name is Tracy Miller, and I'm the Online Teaching Coordinator in the Faculty Development Instructional Design Center. This is my email, which is actually the best way to get a hold of me. Um, depending on where I am and, and what's going on with me, I respond to email very quickly, um, where it can be a little bit more difficult to find me in the office. Um, you can find me in my office right now, but I'm occupied with an online session. So an email is usually the best way to get a hold of me. Um, again, welcome to the session. What we're going to be doing in the next 45 minutes or so is reviewing what you've accomplished already. We'll be talking a little bit about this modular uh, module and um, active learning and engagement and answering any questions you have about the Academy. Um, I put these objectives up in our first session together, and they've been part of the Academy information in the Blackboard course. At this point, I'd like to reintroduce them. But while I'm talking about them, think in your own mind, reflect about them, and how things might have evolved during your time in the Academy, um, or how may, things may have adjusted, or maybe you've just um, confirmed what you always thought about online courses, and that's just fine too. So first, we really try to incorporate active learning strategies in an online learning environment. There's about get, been a lot of engagement and a lot of activity, and I think you've even been really active in um, the content. A um, lot of good effort in not only responding to each other, but the work that you've put into the Academy project. Um, um, I'm trying to remember who it was. I think it was Kristen actually took the quiz. I hate to out you like this, but took the quiz twice. And I'm not sure if um, you did that intentionally or you just were so, um, you know, I had to get my best grade in it. And so I really applaud you for that. Um, and I notice when I allow my students to take the quiz um, a couple times that they're, they'll, they will take it two or three times in order to sort of get that best grade. Um, in there. So um, again, just really a lot of um, activity and a lot of thought put forward and doing your best in this academy. Um, align objectives, assessments, activities, and content in an online learning environment. You notice we focus a lot on alignment. Um, I've seen a lot of your comments talking about um, how, you know, you thought things were going to, you were really intuitive and you thought that everything was aligned in your course, but you still appreciated the activity um, that kind of made you go through it. Um, selecting technology appropriate for your course objectives. Um, this has been in the background a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I do, I, I feel kind of bad that I kind of pulled you out there, but um, yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, select technology appropriate for your course objectives. Um, we haven't been really intentional until this week about selecting the technology that's appropriate for your course objectives, so I think you'll find that'll come into play a little bit more in this last week. But everything that we do, we want to make sure we select the technology that's really going to foster the learning and not bring up any barriers or hinder uh, the student's achievement of our learning objectives. Um, identify resources at NIU that support your online course design and delivery that we really addressed in the first week when we thought about um, what kind of support is available to us and what actions we might want to take. Now I'd like to think you just think back on that and think, okay, my next steps, who can I go to, where can I go to 
for some additional support. And hopefully you know where to find that now. Um, this one, the last one's been big, right? Experience online learning from a student perspective. Uh, there's been um, a lot of dialogue about, wow, I, I didn't even think about how this affected my students. Or now that I'm looking at it as a student, um, I'm starting to kind of adjust my thinking a little bit. And, um, you know, I think it can really be eye opening. So again, in the back of your mind, um, be thinking about that each of those objectives and how you're going to reflect on it and what are your next steps in uh, designing and developing your course or maybe refining your course. I know we have quite a few of you out there that are already teaching online. So um, maybe you're revisiting the course a little bit and um, making some changes. Uh, so everyone, let's introduce yourselves. Give me a little break um, from the talking and let you kind of reintroduce yourselves to each other. Um, just add the information in there. If anyone does want to share any of those reflections, maybe it helps you to kind of write things out. Um, go ahead and, and give us just a couple sentences on uh, your reflection on the Academy. Again, I'm really impressed by the, the, the diversity that we have in the Academy this year. Yes, so we're going to start a little bit whiteboard practice. So the instructions are up on the screen for you. You have the ability, that's just like turning on your microphone, I have the ability to turn on whiteboard or not. Uh, so go ahead and uh, draw a little bit or add a little bit of your reflection. Alicia's loving the academy so far, just trying to fit it around summer teaching and research. Yes, at least we're all in this, the same boat in many regards that way, but I can definitely sympathize. Um, Gian, I agree being a student occasionally is helpful in reminding me to consider student perspectives. Uh, Denise says, um, Academy has been very helpful. Um, I am in my first blended class as we speak. So just, just in time learning, right? Uh, definitely have a new appreciation for time management needs for an online course. Brian says, great content and flow of activities. I would like to have had it before doing an online course. I know, I know, we're trying to get up and running as fast as we can. Um, very helpful for organizational skills. Um, Denise agrees with Brian. He and I talked yesterday and will be high, highly recommended before teaching. Um, it's, Ryan says, it's been fun sharing ideas with people I usually don't get a chance to interact with. I'm going to pause for just a minute to react to um, what Denise said about re recommending it before teaching. It's one of the things I wanted to cover uh, in today's session. And that is, uh, we'd like to offer the Academy twice a year going forward. And that's just the idea that um, if you are teaching in the summer or the upcoming fall, would a winter academy be beneficial to you? And so that would be sort of the second offering that we would have um, each year. What we're struggling with is, does it make more sense to have maybe a couple weeks um, end of this fall semester, end of December, sort of um, before the Christmas break, take a break? and then um, come back and fit the second two weeks of the academy in before the spring semester? Or would it make more sense to start the academy early January and then have it um, bleed into the um, spring semester a little bit? So because you kind of know um, how it works now and you know um, how you might feel about that, um, give me some feedback. I've also started in the Q&A discussion area um, a thread there where we can kind of expand our ideas a little bit more and maybe think through it a little bit more. Um, so it looks like we have some um, positive ideas about having a second one. 
um, would the Academy offer dif different curriculum? No, it would offer the same curriculum um, is, as far as whatever was uh, sort of research best practice. Um, so you wouldn't need to take it again, um, but you would be you could recommend it to um, other people. We are thinking about doing a, a second sort of Academy and we're calling it preparing to teach online. It would focus more on the delivery or the actual teaching of an online course rather than so much focus on the design and development. So that might be um, a part two, I guess, for some of you. Um, I like the summer, but maybe spread it out over eight weeks. Um, it would be more challenging in a regular semester. Um, okay, so good advice. We actually used to have it at six weeks, and um, the recommendation we had was to make it shorter. Um, but maybe we're going to have to to think about that a little bit and uh, think about um, different experiences for different requirements. Um, another course uh, idea about it being the same course, so hopefully I address that. Um, online 2, advanced teaching, um, yes, we're going to be talking about um, online teaching and that preparing to teach online experience. Would there be a chance to make this available earlier in the fall for new faculty since online pro programs are really important for the future of our university growth? Um, Everything's on the table, Ryan. Uh, we're just trying to um, really build our capacity at this time. Um, I don't know if any of you have um, follow us on social media, but we are actually down two positions right now. And so until we get back up to speed, um, we're, we're going to do the things that we think maybe are most critical um, and, and build that capacity over time. Um, Kathy said, I would want this during the semester. I wouldn't want this during the semester. I took an OLC class and it nearly killed me. Yes, again, we weigh it between happening during the semester and happening on contract. Um, so we, we're, we, we kind of balance this line. Um, Therese, yes, um, there is no perfect time. I think you could get people who are interested regardless. I think it would be good to keep the class all as one time. Okay, so re maybe rather than, than breaking it up too much. Um, early January. Personally, I think it's um, going going into January would be better. I'm going to actually um, keep a, a tally of this um, text chat area so that I can kind of um, unpack and show all of your responses, but I really thank you um, for it. Um, so whiteboard practice. I can see that you've all become very good at it. I am going to clear it off for now. And I am going to do a little formative assessment today to talk about alignment. Um, so first question, who can remember where the learning objectives go on this fo uh, foundational um, graphic on how we depict what alignment means in quality. Learning objectives. Give you a chance to try it out. Okay, looks like most of you have chimed in. Uh, the correct answer is at the bottom, which is look, it looks like what the majority of you had selected. And the idea behind that is that the learning objectives really are your foundation. Everything is built off of those, um, those learning objectives. And then how do we know that our students have achieved the learning objectives? We know because we're going to measure them with our assessments. So use your whiteboard tools and tell me where you think in this um, visual our assessments would go. Thanks for the notes at the bottom. <laughs> 
All right, excellent. Every it looks like everybody is on board with that. Yes, everything is measured with our assessments, and and that's why they've kind of put them at the top. So what falls in the middle? What falls in the middle is our content, our tools and technologies we're using to support that achievement of the objectives, um, any any of our course activities. Course activities are a little um, more ambiguous. It, it It's really any activity that you have your students do in course, your course. So it may be an assessment. It may be um, more of a um, formative um, practice activity that you do. So you may not grade it, but it's an activity that you have them do. Um, it could be even engaging with the content at its purest level, just viewing a video or uh, reading through part of your textbook or journal article. So all of those activities and all of those technologies we use to support our students and the content that we provide to them are all those supports that um, are helping the students achieve their um, learning objectives. And so that's basically what this um, represents to you. And so really the three at the bottom could be um, in any particular order. It, it doesn't matter that much, except for we tend to pick our, our content um, next in the stream, which is why that's what we're going to be working on this week in our phase three of the Academy project. Um, so Kathy says, so on the next phase, we put in under assessments or activities. So in the next phase, um, you should already have your assessment column um, added in there. But in that course activities area, you might be repeating some of the things. So look at the exemplar that I provided. Um, you'll see that it'll say something like, take the academy quiz or review the presentation. And so you're just sort of giving those action steps in the course activities. Um, and, and it's good, again, kind of bring it all together and help you think about what the activity is going to be during any module. But it's also great because that is sort of your recipe for what you're going to put into the course to let your students know, OK, here are the the five or six things that you need to do this week in order to know that you've completed the module. Great question. Um, and hopefully that helps Kathy about deciding um, which column assignments go under. Again, the assignments would go under the assessments column if you're going to grade them. Uh, you know, assessments, I always think of something that's gradable. Um, but again, you're going to repeat them in the course activities. Check out the exemplar. I think it'll help. Um, so anything you'd like to share in your design work so so far, um, if you could share with the, the group any surprises that kind of popped up, things you didn't expect, or any challenges. I want to hear from you a little bit. Mike, if you'd like to use your microphone, go ahead. I see some ideas coming in, so take a moment to kind of look through them. Kathy stated earlier um, that I thought we would be using an alignment tool in Blackboard. We are not allowed to put our objectives in it. It would be a great 
tool if we could. Yeah, right now the, ali the um, alignment tool that is in Blackboard is being used um, in a different way. It's, be it's aligning things to um, our sort of professional standards um, or maybe uh, K-12 standards, things that are uh, sort of at a different level. Um, you can use the alignment tool. Um, in Blackboard, but it's not really geared uh, for course design. It's more geared towards aligning it again with those um, professional standards or a sort of certification standards that we might have out there. Um, but it eventually it could be used um, for that if we um, if we just kind of structured it the right way. Um, I know that nursing, by the way, too, is is uh, aligning those with. Um, and CLAC standards and other things that they use in nursing. Uh, but we just want to be really careful that um, a lot of folks aren't just putting um, their own sort of standards in there because we might all have slightly different interpretations where we want to be really specific about what they, what they are and make sure they match again with those professional standards. Uh, Melissa says, I have one module objective per week, but there is some content I want to share with students a week or two before they have a major assessment. And you know what? That's fine. Um, they don't always have to um, be done week to week, but you do want to think about that phrase. Um, a module objective could start with, by the end of this module, students will be able to. And so maybe they are only going to be able to sort of start to form some ideas. Uh, um, maybe you're going to give them some beginner scaffolding that's actually not going to be ex assessed until a little bit further um, into the, um, you know, a couple weeks later. But if you could add in um, something at the end where it said, um, you know, this is actually um, measured, you know, in a by this particular assessment, and that's actually helping students understand the the purpose of something a little bit better. So, for instance, if you gave them a presentation and you said this presentation is going to cover these topics, this will help you in the uh, proposal paper that is due in two weeks. Um, again, it's just kind of connecting it for the students. They don't necessarily um, have to be assessed on it in that week, but they know it's coming up. Hopefully that answered that a little bit. And uh, the idea isn't really for me to answer um, all of your questions here. It's just more to um, see what sort of things might have um, surprised or challenged you. Um, Highly need for a newly graduate graduated faculty. I wish I had my doc program. <laughs> I wish I had this in my doc program. You know, it's interesting that um, political science actually uh, will ask us to come over and um, talk to their PhD candidates about some of this, um, some of these things, because they recognize that their students could be on teaching in the, the near future um, and might benefit from some of this. Um, for theoretic, theoretical knowledge, not learning skills, but critical thinking, how is that expressed in this model? My liberal arts friends often see online teaching as not able to really explore critical thinking. Um, and, you know, there's, um, there's research on that. I, I'm not prepared to, to uh, point to it right now, but part of it's the idea that um, students do have the opportunity to critically think because, um, you know, we're asking them to really um, express themselves um, through critical writing, through um, reflections, through synthesizing information and discussion boards. Um, and we're, we're able to witness that um, because we can, um, even though we can kind of maybe see it happening in, cor in a course or um, observe it um, as we're having discussions in our course, we can lose that because after the course is over, um, we, we haven't necessarily captured that. Where in an online course, sort of all that evidence is, is still there. So um, kind of an interest, interesting 
perspective, we don't want to cheapen our courses by saying that we cannot measure students' critical thinking um, in an online course. We just need to think about how we can observe that and measure that. Um, skipping around a little bit, please feel free to, um, you know, answer each other here. Uh, Brian says, for the course, it is interesting to have one objective per module, then multiple objectives within each module. Um, yeah, and, and it, it could be interesting. Um, I don't think that you need one objective um, per module necessarily. Some of them are going to um, intersect and interact with each other a little bit. Some uh, course level objectives are going to be addressed at different levels um, throughout the course. I think of a, a final project um, where you know that um, that's going to be sort of touched on, on over multiple um, modules. Um, Jan's responding to Kristen, thank you. Um, online courses are very linear, linear, but how does the linearity of the design correspond to teaching nonlinear thinking? That's a, that's a loaded one. <laughs> um, I think courses are, online courses can be sequential. Um, I don't know if they always need to be um, linear. We'll, um, that would be something interesting to explore. Um, and uh, again, if we know what objectives we um, want to achieve, um, what is the best way of achieving that? And the, the course course design may, may change based off of that. Uh, there's a lot of new online learning uh, that talks about adaptive learning. And so that um, allows students to kind of um, ebb and flow um, in their own way. So if they um, accomplished something um, maybe earlier than someone else, they may be able to go on to supplemental work. If they were kind of falling behind, uh, the course may adapt to that and give them some more um, foundational information to kind of um, research through. So that idea of adaptive learning is um, a, a little bit beyond um, what our Blackboard learning management system does, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it goes beyond our imagination and our creativity to be able to do that in our course design. Um, Dana says, I'm glad I took the Academy before I <laughs> taught your first online course in the fall, um, where I can still implement changes. Yes, it's a, it's a good time um, to be here. Um, again, don't forget about your support. Um, we're here to help you with your course development. Um, aligning objectives with assessments in addition to incorporating the accrediting body objectives was interesting and a bit challenging. Uh, yes, uh, and but that's where to start, right? Um, you, you think about your course objectives, but then there's that other lef level of an accrediting accreditation, um, a licensure, other things that I was um, talking to Kathy about, um, that we then want to make sure that all of our courses tie into a program um, evaluation framework, and our programs are going to align with any of those other um, sort of higher standards. Um, so I know we could keep going with this, right? It's, it needs to all kind of work together. Okay, so it looks like a, a lot of good input on um, some things that surprised or definitely challenged us. Um, just a reminder of what our goals were for you um, beyond our, our learning objectives, and that was to form a community of practice and to gain some confidence in your ability to design and develop an online course and um, to experience a variety of methods of online delivery. And so again, just a moment of pause to kind of think through this um, as we're, we've gathered here together. Um, I, I feel like I'm getting every, uh, we're, we're gathered here together to um, honor our community of practice that we have now developed. Um, but I hope that community of practice will continue. 
Uh, I will keep the um, academy open at least until um, the fall and keep that discussion board open. Subscribe to the Getting to Know You um, discussion board if you'd like to keep um, communicating with each other. That way you'll get an email notification when someone adds um, a, a post or a thread into that area. You can do that by clicking on the subscribe button at the top of the page. Um, I can tell you that um, I have learned a lot um, through all of you in this academy and so that's always one of my goals is to understand more about our needs out there um, and uh, a ton of great feedback ideas this week. Um, I actually jotted down some notes on what kind of um, key things came out of the discussion board and so I'm going to share that in an announcement after um, I grade all of the discussion boards but ideas like um, uh, being very clear and um, specific in your feedback to your students keeping it positive um, but making sure you didn't mitigate the positivity by um, kind of intersecting it with words like however or but or um, things like that. Uh, the feedback sandwich was a big one. Um, add that positive comment, uh, the more constructive specific feedback, and maybe ending it again with something else that was really positive. Uh, using feedback banks. Um, hopefully everyone will have a feedback bank at least for um, for disorganized research papers at this point. Um, if I feel like enough people are interested in it and I get some time, I will try to sort of copy and paste those all into a, a feedback bank so we have um, a place to kind of start with. Um, so I think that was my biggest takeaway. Great week last week with that, uh, that feedback exercise. Um, I like the idea of an online group that keeps going, like an ongoing discussion board would be fine, sort of like a Facebook group. Yes, the other option is um, we have started the gallery of online teaching best practices, which was the result of our online teaching symposium that we had on June 1st. Um, so um, please email me if anyone has an interest of being part of that gallery of online teaching best practices. Um, we are going to share more and more of these best practices um, as we discover them. Um, for instance, if you liked the welcome page uh, that we had in the Design Academy, we're going to share the HTML code so that you can embed that into your course. Any favorite rubrics um, that we come across or find, um, we're going to just start building that um, gallery a little bit more. So what have we checked off here? First check mark was module number one. And that, oh, except for I don't know my numbers. Uh, that was mostly getting to know each other, getting started, learning some best practices about online design. Module two was uh, t talking more about learning objectives and alignment. You can see we were getting you ready that that foundational piece, that bottom part of the Parthenon was those learning objectives uh, and how to really set ourselves up for alignment and success. In module three, last week, it was all about um, assessments. So how are we going to measure those learning objectives? And finally, we're wrapping things up this week in Module 4. And that is going to be uh, not only adding uh, in some content, um, exploring some content, kind of defining those course activities a little bit, but also taking any of the feedback that you've received um, previously and making some revisions to your course design document. Uh, so that is going to be part of the, um, the rubric 
looking for evidence that some refinements have been made. It's another just sort of uh, tip or best practice. If you have something that's phased over several weeks uh, and you're spending a lot of time giving your um, students feedback, you want to make sure that they um, have that incentive to sort of go back and uh, make some refinements. So add it into your rubric and make that final rubric just slightly different um, to, to capture that refinement phase. The Applying the Quality Matters Rubric Workshop. It's coming up on July 26. If you've already taken the Applying the Quality Matters Rubric Workshop, um, you're fine, um, except for you probably want to take the refresher course uh, because the edition has changed. They've gone from a fifth edition to a sixth edition. And that's really based off of feedback from all of the schools that are Quality Matters um, subscribers and the latest research that has come out on online course design. Uh, so again, they moved it from a fifth to a sixth edition. And there's just a couple changes uh, that they want to make you aware of. Uh, nothing major, nothing that's going to drastically change your course design. Um, but if you haven't taken it already, uh, then go ahead and sign up for that. Um, it's, again, going to be on July 26th from 8.30 to, it says 4.30 here, because sometimes we get some conversations going. But really, normally, we're done by 4 o'clock. It's going to be in the Sky Room in the Home Student Center. And um, but the Student Center is um, in a bit of, of flux right now with uh, the construction going on, but the Sky Room's open and we are going to have lunch available, which is really the one of the main reasons that we want to make sure that you uh, register so that we have that lunch total um, to work from, but also to make sure that we have the um, all the materials available to you. And that will put you on the road to having, be, first being able to quality review your own course, but potentially even being a, um, a reviewer yourself, or eventually getting your course reviewed. I am going to pull up the flyer so that and put it into the text chat area so you can register right now if you'd like. So um, I've been answering questions as we kind of gone along. But if you have any general re uh, questions at this time, I am glad to answer them. Just add them into the text chat area or raise your hand and try out your microphone. Does Blackboard Collaborate have closed captioning feature um, for a current speaker or for the recording after this session? A good question. Actually, if you have a student with an accommodation, you can contact the Disability Resource Center, and they will provide you with a uh, professional captionist. Uh, basically, how that works is uh, the captionist would enter the session, and you would change their role from uh, just a guest to be a captionist. Uh, and they are familiar with how to use the equipment in order to do live captioning for you during your session. Uh, again, it, it's quite easy to do. I've worked with them. Uh, what they will typically do is ask for an outline or um, any maybe uh, discipline, scientific type um, terms so that they can kind of be ready for your session. As far as closed captioning afterwards, um, that is why I download the session and upload it into YouTube um, to use uh, the, the captioning tools in YouTube. Um, auto captioning and then making corrections um, is the easiest and um, most um, efficient way of adding the closed captionings into your session afterwards. It's also why it takes me um, a day or two to kind of work through it 
uh, to kind of get the captions the way I like them. Um, is there a way to save the module videos um, after concluding the Academy? Actually, because they're all on YouTube, uh, you can go to our um, YouTube channel, uh, the Fat Dev one, I can share that uh, with everyone. But if you just kind of click on one of them, you'll notice we, you'll go into um, our YouTube channel and you can go back and look at any of the presentations on YouTube um, even after the Academy is over with and if I make it unavailable you can watch them on YouTube uh, that's another great benefit to putting them on YouTube if Blackboard was down and you wanted your students to still be able to see your presentations you could you could actually email them uh, the links to the YouTube uh, videos that way um, I love knowing this thank you um, for asking Brian yes Brian always has good questions <laughs> does the same apply to Adobe Connect um, I am not as familiar with Adobe Connect but I am guessing it actually does there will be a way that you I know there's a way to record the session um, if you can download it to an mp4 file um, and then upload it into YouTube it, um, it could be the same mechanism as far as having a captionist um, be part of the session um, again I'm pretty sure that that would be something that they would be able to do I'm just not as sure that the captionist is familiar with Adobe Connect um, because I know I've had experience with them um, in Blackboard Collaborate all right any other questions Dan was actually asking me some great questions about um, accessibility offline and um, she she came up with some great ideas first of all recognizing that um, captioning was something that she would need um, in videos that she picked out from um, external videos um, but also if students had um, created a presentation uh, that they wanted to, to share with the other students if they would need to um, think about the accessibility in that way so I told her that she might want to reach out to the Disability Resource Center um, but that might be that that opportunity where um, you may not worry about that so much until you had an accommodation letter from a student because um, if it was in a small group like Jan described um, it may only affect a, a few students that are, are involved in that small um, area and it would only be the student videos because um, all of your videos would have already been accessible for the whole class um, the thing that I like about connect is that I can stop the recording and resume but I don't think that is a feature um, in collaborate it is I can turn the, the recording off and on if I want um, but I had to say that there's an upcoming version that will make that a little bit more obvious and a little easier um, it actually has sort of a pause feature uh, where this would be more of a turn off and the turn on thing so um, in the next um, few months th they're already showing that on the roadmap that there'll be that sort of pause feature in collaborate um, do you know if DRC students provide an accommodation letter in an online forum um, yes they do uh, because I've received them so basically what I receive is an email from the DRC um, it basically outlining uh, what accommodations are necessary for the students um, in the in one case in the situation I can think of um, the student had a, a, a lot of accommodations that weren't even applicable to the the course um, you know they needed to sit up front and they needed to have a snack and things like that so um, you know it, it, it there was um, there was all of that as part of the accommodation letter um, but really it was is quite easy to accommodate the student um, by you know doing some of the normal things like adding additional time to tests um, and making a, a, a plan of action um, in one case um, I allowed them to have the discussion board prompts um, ahead of time so that they had more time to prepare for them they didn't actually have access to the discussion boards ahead of time because that would have kind of brought them off kilter but again they had those prompts to kind of prepare for um, 
you never had one in, in the three classes, and, and that's good, right? <laughs> um, Adobe Connect cost. Uh, right now, their, um, the Adobe Connect is being supported by the College of Business and Outreach. So going forward, um, we are not sure um, what, the, what that'll mean. Uh, the university supports um, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. Um, in lean times, uh, I'm not sure if the university is going to want to support two platforms that um, have a lot of the same functionality um, as each other. So that might require um, a relook at both of the platforms to um, sort of pick one. So, um, but right now I do not believe by a course to course basis there, there would be an Adobe Connect cost. Um, I've seen several DRC students in my uh, online classes. Works fine. Good to know. Okay. Again, I can still hang out for a little bit more. Um, we have about eight more minutes together, but I want to make sure that I take a minute and thank everyone for um, a great experience. Um, you've been really supportive of each, of each other. Um, and I hope we can keep this network sort of going. Um, I am actually going to a Blackboard status meeting after this, so I'm going to learn a little bit more for you about what's going on with Blackboard. I'm also getting a demo later this afternoon on a product called Blackboard Ally, which is an accessibility tool. So hopefully I'll have some more accessibility information to share with all of you soon. You're welcome, everyone. I've really learned a lot from everyone. It's been a great group to work with, and I know we'll keep working together. Take care. Bye, Kathy.